If you've ever tried to purchase lumber, then you've noticed that the stated size is not the actual size. For example, let's look at this 2x4. At the store they call this a 2x4, so in theory 2 inches by 4 inches. But if we measure it, that's 1.5 and, and that's 3.5. Wait, that's not even close to 2x4. Are they lying to you? Well, not really. So why is this the case? To answer that, we're gonna have to go back about a couple hundred years. In the 1800s, when a house was being built, trees were cut right from the property or just the local surrounding area. Everything was sized and shaped to whatever you needed to build a house right there. And the original 2x4, along with all the other lumber, was usually rough sawn. In other words, it had all these characteristics going through the sawmill, and they didn't worry too much about that as long as it was the correct size. And when that lumber was brought over from the sawmill, it usually weighed quite a bit because it was usually still wet. And as different species of wood were used in the building process, some would dry faster than others, thus creating little size differences. But since the homes were being built from the lumber right there on the property, they could compensate for all of this from the next tree they cut down to the next board they cut down. So this concern wasn't that big of an issue. Then around the turn of the 20th century, lumber was starting to be shipped much further distances. That's because the local forest could not supply enough wood for the growing cities. And due to these needs, the weight of the lumber started to become an issue, especially for those longer trips. Now in my experience, a wet board versus a dry board can weigh significantly different. I'd estimate even up to 50% more if it is wet. Now of course that depends on the species and how you dry it, but in either way, that's a significant change, especially trying to ship it. And as these companies started to find ways to reduce this water content, kiln drying became popular. It's basically a way to heat up the air and have it move across the wood to wick away the excess water in the wood to make it much lighter. Now I've actually built a solar kiln in my backyard and showing how this process works. If you're interested in that, I'll put a link to those in the description. Now, as you start to dry out the wood, something else happens. The wood will actually shrink just a little bit. And with these two factors, the suppliers started to like this thinner, lighter wood, especially when needing to ship further distances. Plus, another option that was starting to become popular in those times was actually planing the wood or trying to make it smooth. This process helped to remove all the sawmill marks from your wood, making it nice and smooth and a lot prettier. Plus, it helped to reduce the thickness of the wood, making it lighter as well. So now those companies can start drying the wood and planing them down, and that means they can ship a lot more lumber at one time, thus reducing the cost for each of the boards and increasing their profits. But with all this decrease in size and increasing profits created another problem. There wasn't any true standard size at the time. Therefore, company to company could vary greatly in the size of your wood. And as you might have guessed, this range of sizes caused a lot of issues when building homes. So around the early 1900s, the American Lumber Congress tried to get a specific size and terminology for lumber. But of course, disagreement over these sizes, well, it lasted for a long time. Not to mention the lumber shortages from World War I and World War II did not help the situation. Then after World War II, we had the economic boom. We had soldiers coming home. They wanted new cars, new homes, and we needed lumber. And we needed it fast and we needed it to be the same, unique, all the same size so there's no issues. And this finally forced these companies and leaders to come together to start to standardize the size. And then around the 1960s, they finally came together. They agreed upon the size and the moisture content, and the ending result was one and a half inches by three and a half inches. Today, all builders in the construction industry know that a two x four is not a two x four. The nominal size is not the actual size. But in theory, wood is still cut at two inches and four inches at the lumber mill, and then after all the planing and drying, it's at one and a half and three and a half. So who regulates these standards today? Well, there are state and local inspectors that go to sawmills and retail locations just to make sure everything is within spec. But due to the expansion and contraction of wood, there's a little bit of leeway giving in the exact size. So don't expect your two x four to be exactly one and a half and three and a half. It's gonna vary a little bit, especially company to company. For example, I've purchased a bunch of 2x4s in my life, and even from the same company, I've noticed if you compare two different boards, they can vary anywhere from a 16th to a 32nd on almost every piece. So, whenever you're doing your projects, make sure you measure everything and know your wood. And we have one more problem. 
I do have to mention board warpage. That's, depending on how your wood dries, it could twist and turn and just crack and just look horrible. Now, I'm not gonna go into depth on this in this video, that's a topic for another video, but keep in mind that board warpage, that's a big problem as well. So, how hard is it to know the actual size of lumber when you go to buy it? Well, here's some general rules, and I wrote these down so there's no chance of me forgetting it. If the nominal size, that's the two and the four, if it is less than two inches, then the actual size will be reduced by about a quarter inch. If the nominal size is less than eight inches, then the actual size will be narrowed by about a half inch. And if the nominal size is over eight inches, then it'll be narrowed by about three quarters of an inch. Yes, this can be confusing, especially for beginners. But at least, at least, there is some consistency in it. Here's a quick tip for you. If you're a beginner, take a measuring tape whenever you go to buy lumber. That way you can measure everything out and you don't have to get it mixed up and, well, have incorrect sizes and have to go back to the store and buy more. I've had to do that before. On another note, if by chance you forgot your measuring tape, go over to your tool section of your lumber store, borrow one, measure everything out, put it back, and it doesn't cost you a thing. And now for the million dollar question, will this nominal size change in the near future? Well, that is a very good question, especially with all these new products coming out in the construction industry. If it does change, I doubt it'll be a quick one because those in the construction field find it a lot easier to yell, hey, can you hand me a two by four? Versus, hey, can you go grab that one and a half by three and a half? But in the end, your guess is probably about as good as mine. Now, I hope this little history lesson helps to reduce the confusion of lumber and its sizing by just a little bit. But don't feel bad, especially if you're a beginner. I've been buying it for years and I still on occasion forget which size is which and which reduction I gotta do and I still get them mixed up. So don't feel bad. With that said, I hope you feel a little bit more confident in going to buy your lumber and have fun building.